The best kind of soups and stews are the kind that help you clean out the refrigerator. And that is exactly what we're doing today. And it's so, so delicious. Welcome to The Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. And today's recipe is for chicken stew. This recipe is super easy to make. You can either slow cook it or simmer it. You can use the Ninja Foodi, you can use your slow cooker, you can use the stove. So really, you can do this anyway. And the best news is use up the ingredients in your fridge that are getting ready to go bad. You know, those vegetables that have been sitting in there for a little bit too long and you need to use them right away. Way. This is the recipe to do that with. So what I'm gonna do first is saute my chicken and my vegetables. So I wanna put in some butter, I'm putting in four tablespoons of salted butter. The reason why I'm using butter, you could use any kind of oil, but I just like the flavor of butter in this. I'm also going to be adding flour, so we're gonna be making sort of like a roux. So we're gonna turn the Ninja Foodi on, sear saute on high, and get the butter melted. What I have here is one celery stalk that I diced up in a, about a quarter to a half of an inch dice, the half of a sweet onion. That's just my preference. You can use any type of onion you have, and one uh, carrot. And they're all diced up in about a quarter to a half inch dice. This is gonna be our seasoning base to season our stew. I also have larger chopped vegetables because I think it's important that we build texture into stew and stew to me is a little bit heartier than even a soup. So I keep my vegetables on the large side. All right, so as soon as this butter melts, I'm gonna put in the vegetables. In the meantime, let me talk about the chicken. Now, you could use any type of chicken you want. You could even use, you could even put a whole chicken in here, really, uh, and, and it would be fine, because you can slow cook it, and it would give off tons of flavor, and then just take it off the bone when it's done cooking. But what I'm using is a combination of chicken breast and chicken thighs. I have a total of two pounds of meat. This is raw and thawed. And the only reason why I'm using a combination is because I only had a pound and a half of chicken breast and I had some chicken thighs, so I'm just using a combination. I've also tested the recipe with all chicken breasts, it's perfectly fine, or all chicken thighs would be perfectly fine too. You could even use already cooked chicken, you would just not add it in at this point, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. All right, to the chicken, I'm gonna season it very simply with one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of pepper, and of course you can adjust those seasonings if you wanted you know, to go down on the salt or down on the pepper, it's perfectly fine. And then I'm just gonna toss this around so that the seasonings coat the chicken. All right, that looks good. Let's check on our butter. It's not quite ready. Almost. I'm using the stainless steel pot, but you could use the ceramic pot too. It's no problem whatsoever. All right, we're sizzling away. So now we can add in our chicken. Just go ahead and dump it all in. That's perfectly fine. Then I like to put it down into one layer so we can get some browning there. Next, I'm gonna add in those finely diced vegetables. I'm just gonna put them on top for right now while the chicken browns. And then once I get a little browning on the chicken, I'll start to toss it all around. And then we're gonna add a quarter cup of flour. Now this is not a pressure cooked recipe. And the reason being is because we add the flour right now. And if you try to go under pressure after adding the flour, you most likely will get the water notice. So that's why I chose to either, I slow cook mine for about three hours, or you could just simmer it at the end until your vegetables are cooked through. So either way is fine, but I just like to set it and forget it. So I throw it on the uh, slow cook function, it works fine. All right, so let's, while, the, while that's browning, let's go ahead and talk about our vegetables and our potatoes. So the first thing I have here are my vegetables that are gonna go into my stew. I have about four ounces of portobello mushrooms. Again, totally optional. If you don't like mushrooms, don't add them in. If you love mushrooms, put in eight ounces. No problems whatsoever. I have two stalks of celery, and they are cut up into about one to one and a half inch pieces. 
Like I said before, I think a stew needs some hearty vegetables, so I keep mine on the large side. I have one yellow pepper, again, cut into a, you know, one to one and a half inch chunk. I have an orange pepper, and same, cut the same way, which may seem kind of strange. Like, why am I using orange and, and yellow? Well, that's because that's what I had and that's what I needed to use up. You could use red, you could use green, you could omit the peppers. That's the beauty of this kind of recipe. Do it the way you like it. Then I have two carrots that I also cut up into chunks that are about one and a half inches uh, thick. And I think that's it now for my vegetables. I did want to talk about the celery. I like to use the inner leaves in this, but I'm not gonna put them in right now. I stir them in at the end. I just think they add a really pretty look to the stew. So I will keep that to the side and we'll add that in at the end. If some of the little pieces get in there, I don't worry about it. All right, so those are my vegetables. You could use string beans. I mean, really, you could use whatever vegetables you have that you want to get rid of. Now, I probably wouldn't use like Brussels sprouts or things like that or cabbage. They, I mean, you could, but it's gonna totally change the flavor of the stew. And then I have some potatoes. I have eight ounces of russet, so one russet. We're gonna use that later in the recipe. And then I have about 12 ounces of Yukon Gold potatoes. You could use all russets, but I love the texture of the Yukon Gold after it's slow cooked. It really you know, maintains a little bit of firmness, so I like that. And I may not add all of them. I'll use my judgment when I get to that point. I might just add two of them. It just depends on how, how everything looks together because you want good proportions of each amount of food. All right, so let's go ahead and flip this chicken. We got a little bit of browning, that's all we need. So after about five minutes of cooking the vegetables and the chicken, we're gonna add in the flour. I'm using a quarter of a cup of flour. You don't wanna add more unless you add more fat. So if you wanted to make this even thicker than it, than it is, which I think it's a good consistency, and you wanted to add more flour, that's fine, but add in a little bit more butter or some sort of a fat, because the chicken breast and the chicken thighs don't have a whole lot of fat because they're boneless, skinless. So we're gonna go ahead and sprinkle the flour on. Now this, of course, is not traditionally how you make a roux, but I find that it works really well for this recipe. Then move everything around to get the flour kind of coated on the vegetables and the meat, and then we are going to cook this for about two minutes. That is just gonna cook off the flour taste, and then we're gonna add our stock, our seasonings, our vegetables, and get to slow cook it. And while you're cooking it for two minutes, I would stir occasionally just to make sure nothing burns to the bottom. And we want to keep it on high and, uh, like I said, just stir. Scrape the bottom. All right, next we're going to deglaze the pot with four cups of chicken stock. So just pour that all in. And now we're gonna scrape that bottom to make sure nothing's stuck down there. We want all of that flavor in our stew. All right, let's go ahead and get in the rest of our seasonings. What I'm using is two bay leaves, so I'm just gonna put those in. I have one teaspoon of sea salt fine grind, one teaspoon of dried thyme leaves, and a half of a teaspoon of pepper. Now in the test recipes, I used one teaspoon of pepper, and Jeff and I loved the flavor. It was just slightly peppery, but I decided to tone it down for the recipe. But if you are a pepper lover like we are, then add one teaspoon. You're gonna love it. It's really delicious. All right. Give that a stir around. Now we can go ahead and add in our vegetables. So I can just dump those right in. Oh, I forgot to mention the onion. So let me, I have, 
I have a half of an onion in there because I only used half in the smaller dice mixture. So I put the other half of an onion, but I have a whole onion. I'm gonna add more onion because I just happen to love onions. All right, let's go ahead and mix this around here. And cutting the onion, if you want big pieces, is really easy. Let me just grab a knife here and I will show you how to do it. All right, so I just cut it down the middle like that and then cut off each end. Peel the layers off until you have nice, nice shiny skin there or nice shiny onion. And then I just make chunks. So I go down and I just make like four to five chunks. And then you're gonna have nice big pieces of onion in your stew. And I love that. That's the way I like it. But of course, if you don't want the onion in there, omit it. If you want it to be smaller, it's perfectly fine. All right, now let's get our potatoes in. I'm gonna just stir this. Now don't worry, it cooks down. So even though it looks like, oh my gosh, that's too many vegetables, it cooks down. Oh my gosh, this is just so beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna start out just with dicing up two of these potatoes. And to do that, I keep these in sort of large chunks too. Yeah, and I think that's what makes a stew or sets a stew apart from a soup, in my opinion. There's probably some other technical reason that I don't know about, but no worries. All right. Now, let's see. We're going to stir this around a little bit, and I want to see, like, are there enough potatoes to vegetable ratio? Do I need to add another potato? I'm gonna add one more. All right, now, the final ingredient is this russet, but we are not going to chop this. We are gonna grate this. You do not need to remove the skin or anything, which is my kind of recipe because I hate peeling potatoes. I am just simply going to grate this and put the grated potato in there. It's gonna help thicken everything up and oh, it's just amazingly delicious. So you can do this over the bowl or you could do it on your cutting board. I'm just gonna do it on the cutting board here. It ends up to be a, a, probably a good two cups of shredded potatoes. So if you had um, you know, some other type of shredded potato, I, they might even come dehydrated. You could probably use those. But two cups of hydrated potatoes like these are would probably only be about a cup of the dehydrated. All right, so once the shredded potatoes are in, we're gonna give it one more stir. We put the pressure lid on in the vent position because we're slow cooking. And we're gonna slow cook for three to four hours on high. Now, if you wanted this to take eight hours, put it on low. I like to get all of the shredded potato or as much as I can under the liquid so it doesn't start to turn brown. We don't want that in our stew. It's a full pot here, definitely. If you have the five quart and you wanna use that, you are gonna to need to decrease everything probably by half to be on the safe side. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna give one more scrape down at the bottom. All right, good, good deal. All right, now, pressure lid on valve vented we are going to go on the slow cook function i want it to be on high and i want it to be for four hours and we're going to hit the start button now if you didn't want to spend four hours waiting for your stew you can just simply simmer it okay you can even put the lid on and put it to vent and simmer it on low and it'll be done a little bit faster but you are going to want to check on it at least every 30 minutes and give it a stir so we make sure nothing burns to the bottom so that's very important me 
I'd just rather move on to something else, like making a nice crusty loaf of bread to go with it. So I'm gonna leave it on the slow cook and let it do its thing. All right, so we have almost been uh, slow cooking for four hours. We just have a few seconds left. I wanted to let you know that about an hour and a half ago, I checked it, gave it a stir, and I tasted one of the um, carrots, and they were rock hard. I don't want you to freak out about that. I can almost guarantee you when we open up this pot, they're going to be perfect, okay? I don't want that to worry you. It takes a while with the slow cooker function on the Ninja Foodi. It's not like a crock pot, but it does work really, really well. So I urge you to give it a try and have some patience with it. So four hours on high, we should be perfect with our vegetables. Not too soft, but certainly not hard. All right, let's go ahead and open it up. It looks good, but it doesn't look very pretty. I mean, it looks like a looks like a hearty soup. We want to change that look just a little bit, make it a little bit prettier. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to get out these bay leaves because we don't want to leave those in the soup. So let me find the other one. I can. Well, I don't seem to be finding it right now, but I will. So definitely take those out before you serve it. Hmm. Nope, can't find it, but it's in there somewhere. All right, no worries. So now I'm gonna add in one cup of cream. This is just going to make the stew a little prettier, a little thicker, and I don't know. A little more enjoyable if you ask me. So this, the texture of this chicken stew is between a chowder and a soup. So it's not super thick. If you wanted it super thick, you would want to mix in more flour either at the beginning or you could take out some of the broth now and mix it up with some uh, flour and thicken your sauce. That would be fine either way. Oh, see, now doesn't that add um, oh, there it is, that bay leaf. Doesn't that add, now the, now the stew looks beautiful. Now, the cream's optional, certainly. Okay, remember that inner piece with the little uh, leaves of the celery? I'm gonna throw those in now. And I'm also gonna throw in about a tablespoon of parsley. This is really simply for looks, mostly. I don't think parsley gives too much flavor when you add it like this, but it makes the stew look so pretty has that little green burst of color. All right, so now it's time to figure out whether or not you want to thicken up your stew or not. I think that this one's a little thinner than my test batches, just by a little bit. That could be, maybe I used more of one kind of vegetable or something like that. So those are the kind of variables that happen. Also, remember I added chicken thighs, so maybe they gave off more um, juices, which is very, very possible. So if you want to thicken it up, like I, want mine a little bit thicker. I like the uh, thickness to be between a soup and a chowder. So not real super thick, but not thin like a soup. This is more soup consistency to me. So I'm gonna fix it. Um, and I'll know next time if I add in chicken thighs, I'll decrease my chicken stock a little bit or start off with more butter and flour. These are the adjustments that are that we're always making in the kitchen. So I'm gonna try to do this pretty simply. Now you could use cornstarch, that would be fine, but since I have cream in here already, I'm gonna go ahead and just ladle some in. Two tablespoons of flour. Now the flour, you need to make sure that you get it to be really well mixed. If it is lumpy when it goes in, it will be lumpy in your uh, stew. So I'm just gonna mix this up. You can also put it in a glass uh, container and shake it. I've done that before in my beef stew. And I'm gonna see if there's enough fat in here to combine with all these little pieces and get a thin, well-combined flour and broth. Add in a little bit more. And while I'm doing that, because I'm gonna need to heat this up to thicken it, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the sear saute. Turn it on high and
Another thing you can do if you can't get out all the lumps, which is probably what I'm gonna do since I don't really wanna change bowls into a bigger bowl, is you can strain it. So I'm gonna grab my little strainer and I'm just gonna strain it back into this mixture. already thickening up that's awesome all right that looks good so that was just two tablespoons of flour with about a cup of the mixture so maybe not even half of a cup mixed up and then strained so we don't have any lumps in there and you could also use cornstarch that would be fine all right so now we are going to go ahead and let this heat up a little bit and in the meantime let's go ahead and cook and test out a carrot because those are the vegetables that are gonna take the longest to cook. So let's see if we cook them long enough with the four hours of slow cook. I'm just gonna take one out here and I'll describe it for you. All right, so let's see. Okay, it's firm, it's definitely firm. Mm, pretty good. It could probably cook just a tad bit longer, but that's going to be taken care of right now. So I'm not going to worry about it. Um, what I would say for four hours on slow cook on high, cut these half of the width that I did and you'll be good to go. They are good, but they're just a tad underdone. Now this is thickening up beautifully. Love it, love it, love it. I'm gonna let this simmer to finish cooking those carrots that are in the large pieces and then we'll get to tasting it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the Ninja Foodi off. Our uh, stew has thickened nicely and I probably simmered it about 10 minutes on high while stirring frequently to finish cooking those carrots. So let's see how they did. So let's go ahead and get a big old scoopful here. Oh, looks amazing. Let's get some mushroom. Whoops, I dropped an onion. That's okay. All right, so here we go. Nice big bowl of chicken stew. This would be great with some crusty bread, but I didn't make any. Uh, you could also thicken this more and put it over uh, like egg noodles. That would be really good. But let's see. First, I want to taste for seasoning. So I want to see if it needs any salt or pepper. No, it's really good. Me, personally, I like a little more pepper. All right, let's see if it is ready to be tasted. So I have a piece of chicken thigh and a little bit of a chicken breast and uh, one of those orange peppers. Mm. Wow, that chicken thigh meat is so tender. Let me make sure, let me get a piece of that I, what I know is chicken breast. Let me compare that. Wow, I really like that. That's really tender too, so hey. All right, let's see. The potatoes held their shape perfectly. Now let's make sure that they are soft. The flavor in this stew is amazing. I really love the subtle yellow and orange pepper flavor. You can taste that in the stew. Very subtle, but oh my gosh, it is delicious. Perfecto 
on the uh, potatoes. Perfecto. Mushrooms are perfect. Now, let's get this big guy. Did that 10 minutes of sauteing do the trick? It's a huge carrot. I think I made these bigger than I usually do. Okay. Mm. Okay, so definitely a little softer. Still not quite there. So I'm definitely gonna change the recipe to make sure that we call for about three quarters of an inch chunk of carrot instead of this big one and a half inch or one to one and a half inch. It just is too thick and it just did not, they just did not get tender enough. And they're a little too big to eat in the stew, to be honest with you. So I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe in my test batches, maybe I did cut them thinner and I just didn't really realize it. Anyway, no big deal, but the stew is absolutely delicious. Again, this is something that you can put in the vegetables that you have in your refrigerator that you need to use up. You can switch up the seasonings. You can do so many things with it. Thicken it up and pour it over noodles or rice. It would be absolutely delicious. So as always, Make it yours and make it delicious.